Welcome back to the channel guys. As you can see on the bench we have something completely out of the ordinary. Um, we have a 50cc engine out of a Primal Raminator. So uh, we're going to dig into this thing and see what we can do. Uh, it's a little boggy out of the hole. That's in part because of this clutch. Uh, engages way too early. Not even close to stepping up on pipe. Um, so we're going to have to address that. Probably do something with the port timing. Most likely raise it some. Uh, cylinder head is going to be changed. I don't know if I'm going to do anything to the head itself. Most likely cutting down the top of the cylinder to tighten up that squish. The head space is pretty large on these. I'd say in the 60,000 range usually. Uh, basically this is just a 49cc pocket bike engine with a 44 millimeter Chinese big bore kit and uh, you know a Chinese carburetor and intake. So I mean there's nothing special about this thing. Uh, obviously a piston port two stroke with a uh, you know reed gauge. Uh, typically these are two pedal reed gauges. Um, if they come steel we're definitely gonna have to do something about that. Steel reeds are not good for RPM, so I mean basically that's what we're after here. We want to increase RPMs. Obviously by raising the port timing, we you know that's what we're after. Um, so if these are steel, we're going to end up putting some uh, glass reeds in it. We're going to do something with the clutch. I haven't decided yet if we're just going to slap a two shoe adjustable on it or I'm just going to lighten the shoes. I don't really know yet. Uh, ideally I want this thing to come in around like 7500 RPM, 7800 RPM so it's stepped up on pipe and that thing's ready to rip. Um, you know other than that nothing too fancy. We might do something with the flywheel, lighten it up a little. I'm not sure. Um, basically we just need to rip into it, see what our port timings are, what our durations are. Um, like I said I'm pretty confident that the squish is in the 60 thousandths range. Uh, they typically are on these things. So uh, let's just rip into it and see what the hell's in there. Alright, so the head gasket, um, if I had to guess, I don't have my calipers right here with me, I'll have to grab them, but I would say it's about a 20 thousandths shim, uh, 20 thousandths thick. So obviously, you know, that's sitting against the face of the cylinder like that. Hopefully we can do the math so we don't have to make a thinner gasket. If we do the math correctly, we'll be able to use this and still be set up at 30 or 40, depending on where I want to go. I might set it at 40 and then I can always put a 10 in here instead of the 20 and that'll give me the 30. Um, but basically, there we have it, cylinder heads off cylinder looks okay there's no scores or anything I mean it is brand new this has not been run uh, but you never know I mean they assemble them dry in China you know so uh, I guess the next thing to do is going to be pull off the carburetor and the housing um, I will most likely pull the cylinder but I'm not going to do that right yet I don't want to pull the piston off the wrist pin uh, so I don't want the thing banging the skirt off the side of the case at this point so uh, we're just going to pull off the carburetor for now. This also has your uh, choke assembly in it, which is kind of hokey pokey. Uh, basically, you know, this, this is drawing in air and dirt around this uh, choke flap. This is kind of hokey pokey. Uh, basically what they should have done was put a uh, shaft through this plate. You put a shaft through this plate and then you actually run a uh, arm off the shaft 
and then this plate would be bolted you know on the back of the uh, shaft so basically it would just be a bolt hole or a stud through there um, so not so smart on that one it uh, basically is what it is like I said this is a pocket bike um, I mean I don't know maybe less dirt I don't know what they were thinking it, it's just not right you shouldn't do that so I mean typical Chinese manufacturing uh, let's uh, pull this carburetor off see if we can do this without ripping the gasket just try to finesse this off oh, of course all right they even put uh, some sealer on there so that's interesting so we got our carburetor off and we're just gonna pull this gasket off nicely very gently just pluck around the outside edge manipulate it shake it don't rip it because it's just gonna damn rip the gasket and we don't need that so there we go carby is off gasket is off and, uh, here's our inlet our reed block uh, one thing I'm seeing I mean look at this this is I mean, come on guys nothing like uh, choking the cylinder off you know depriving it of air and fuel I probably shrunk the bore up to about 13 millimeters we'll get all that crap off after so uh, let's pull this reed block about a 3d printed cylinder head ls style cylinder head we're gonna use that to lump that damn thing off hopefully to the rescue <laughs> so like I said we got it loose um, the bottom portion of the gasket is really kind of fighting I'm just gonna work it nice and easy yep there she goes of course it's stuck to the block and uh, the reed block, the case and the block. Probably gonna have to order a gasket kit for this thing. I mean, if you're just gonna buy gaskets and just rip the damn thing off. I mean, uh, I should probably do that, honestly. I think we're going to lose this thing. It is glued. They did glue it, so uh, that's uh, crappy. We did lose a corner. Yeah, we lost it. We're just going to pluck it. So make sure you guys get, you know, gaskets. It's like a $7 kit. So just buy the gaskets, that way you don't have any problems there. Get the rest of this gasket material off. Most likely I'm gonna order a gasket kit anyway. Um, you can get copper base gaskets for these and the copper base gaskets uh, might be enough to lift the port timing might stack them uh, like I said we'll see what it is I gotta check the port timing and all that stuff first but um, reed block is off let's take a look 
definitely has uh, metal pedals, so that's definitely got to be changed. We're going to have to go carve it on that. It's got a uh, another gasket between the reed block and the intake isolator. Uh, again, that's going to have to be pulled apart. It seems to be stuck pretty well, so uh, we'll be needing that gasket too, which comes in the kit, so thankfully that's a good thing. So now that we got our reed block off, everything is out of the way. Let's get rid of this and uh, let's pull this cylinder off nicely. Nice. The base gasket didn't rip uh, just in case we need it. The cylinder is off. Definitely looking like a 44 millimeter bore. Um, ports are actually quite smooth on this so I probably won't do any grinding on the cylinder yeah it looks pretty damn good so most likely like I said we're gonna cut this uh, top lip I haven't determined what yet as far as how much um, that will come with whatever timing I do uh, if I raise this cylinder, then this is going to have to be cut more. So that's all going to come into the equation after. Um, cylinder, like I said, looks good. Ports look good. Uh, piston looks decent. Let's see if we can uh, pluck this sir clip. And pull the piston off. Move the wrist pin. All right, we got our clip out. And then we should, in theory, be able to push this wrist pin out the other side. So a wrist pin's on its way out. We'll pluck that out. Looks like a 10 millimeter pin. And it does have a cage needle up in the top of the rod. So that's good. Um, piston looks good. Uh, one thing I'm seeing, I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up. But there is some um, cast schlag in these uh, boost ports on the piston. So uh, I will probably clean those up. I mean, that's the last thing we need is a sharp little shard coming off and just smoking this thing right from the rip. So that will probably be cleaned up with a uh, Dremel. Uh, like I said, there is some nasty schlag burrs in there. Uh, looks like you know part of the casting process that they left like flash so we will definitely clean that up that will make a big difference uh, in the way that thing supercharges uh, like I said caged 10 millimeter wrist pin uh, needle bearing uh, so that's a good thing nothing wrong with that we like that and, uh, basically here's our crank and rod assembly which literally has freaking rust on the weight. What in the hell, Bobby? That ain't cool. So that's pretty shitty. I'm gonna have to clean that up. So this thing obviously sat around, or the slow boat from China. We got a little bit of uh, rust on the crank weights. You're definitely not gonna be able to see that. I'd have to uh, shed some light on that subject. But anyway, take my word for it. There's a... Uh, some rust on the big side of the crank so uh, everything else looks good the big end roller bearing needle bearing seems like it's uh, good we got no up and down play so I mean obviously like I said it's a brand new motor but it's nice to check so one thing I'm noticing is you will see here the gasket is matched to the cylinder and look how much case we have showing here in these areas so these areas will probably be cleaned up with a Dremel tool we will uh, make that a nice smooth transition into the transfers of the cylinder so um, basically that's where we're at for right now and uh, we'll rip into it a little more probably uh, do some squish tests see what we have for you know headspace in there and uh, do some uh, timing math 
we'll throw a degree wheel on it and see what we have for uh, duration and you know openings and closings and all that happy stuff so stay tuned guys we'll be back at it thanks for watching catch you on the next one